So what is this campaign that you are starting from? Which of those countries you are traveling from? The Save Soil Movement, uh, starting from uh, 21st of March, We've been uh, activating this for over two years now. In the last eight months, we have met uh, many uh, national leaders, environmental ministers across the world. And uh, what I see is uh, just everywhere in the world, everybody knows that there is a serious problem. And everybody knows that it has to be attended to urgently. At the same time, nobody has been acting, nobody has even been talking about soil till recently. As all of you know, even in COP26 uh, in Glasgow, hardly soil was an issue, everything else was discussed. So, now we are trying to shift the narrative towards soil. What I see from this is, everybody knows serious problem is there and action is needed immediately. But I think uh, <laughs> the world has been waiting for uh, an idiot who is willing to bell the cat. Nobody wants to talk about it. So, I started speaking about it eight months ago. Since then, uh, as you can see in the news, soil has been becoming a narrative everywhere. We want to change the narrative that soil is an important part of climate change. Up to forty percent of climate change could be happening simply because of open soils. Soils which are not protected with shade either by crop or grasslands or, uh, you know, wetlands or trees or whatever. As all of you know, tree-based agriculture is something that we've promoted for over twenty-four years. Today we have hundreds of thousands of farmers working with us in the Kaveri Basin. And uh, <coughs> uh, here, uh, as you see, if you don't understand what is climate change, all the ladies who are here and all the children, just go stand in the sun for one hour, come under the tree shade, you understand what is climate change. So if this happened to your life, how different it is to be under the shade. You must understand it's happening to every life. When I say every life, a handful of soil in southern India could have anywhere between seven to ten billion organisms. A handful of soil can have ten to eight to ten billion organisms. So if these organisms go down as it is going down because we are plowing the land with machines, that means up to twelve to fourteen inches we are plowing and leaving it open in summers. This is just killing it. There is no organic content in the farm, there are no animals, there are no trees. So there is no way to put back organic content. So this is an effort to bring a policy. In 192 countries, we have written to all the heads of state in these countries to change the policy that if you own agriculture land, a minimum of three to six percent of organic content should be there. This is our responsibility for this future generation which is standing right here, all these children. This is our responsibility because by 2045, every responsible scientist is saying we'll be producing forty percent less food. Forty percent less food, but our population will be well over nine billion. Nine billion people, forty percent less food. That's not a world you want to live in. That's not a world where you want to leave your children and go. This is an express need. We must act now. If we do this, in ten to fifteen years, we can make a significant turnaround. The idea of enshrining it in the policy is so that it sustains. Here in Coimbatore City, if you want to build a building, if you have ten thousand square feet of land, you can't build ten thousand square feet of building. You must build maybe six, seven thousand and leave some space for yourself, your neighbor, there is a law. But if you go into old parts of the city, you will see people have built homes in such a way, there is no concept of a window. All sides, only one door to enter, one door, the same door to get out. That's how we built. But today you can't do that. Why? Because there is a law. Similarly, if you have agricultural land, if you have ten acres of land, you can plow every inch of the land. In ten to fifteen years, you can turn it into a desert. There is nobody to even ask you, why are you doing this? We need a law, recommendation laws, incentives, and maybe in future when it becomes very difficult, it has to become mandatory. But we need laws, recommendation laws, guidelines by the government enshrined in the law, you know, lawmaking process, because without this, we cannot ensure future generations will have soil. We may have many things in our life, soil is the most basic thing, whether it's an insect or a worm or a bird or a tree or you and me, we all come from the soil. Every life that you see and everything that you see has come from soil. Soil is the only magical place but where if you bury death, it will sprout life. But majority of the farmers are using chemical fertilizers to, to increase their production. 
See, we are not… No, 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 no. We are not talking about chemical fertilizers. This is just like you're eating good food, you're healthy, but you go to the doctor, he says, uh, you don't have enough iron, you don't have enough calcium. Then he gives you a pill for how long? Maybe three months, six months, something like this. The idea is to bridge that, bridge the nutritional gap. Similarly in the soil, if nitrogen is not enough, you can put some nitrogen. Phosphorus is not enough, some phosphorus. You can't plaster the land with that. So because you took these two pills and you felt better tomorrow morning, from day after tomorrow you give up your food, just eat the pills. This is what we're doing to the soil. This is what needs to change. We are not talking about any specific form of agriculture. A farmer can decide which form of agriculture because people living on an urban center should not advise farmers how they should do their farming because they know best and above all, if you cut all fertilizer and pesticide and everything right now, our food production will come down to twenty-five percent of what it is right now. So that's not a risk that anybody should take. Or I am only saying, will you take lot of supplements? If you are eating well and you are healthy, similarly if the organic content is good, then the usage of fertilizers will naturally come down. Right now, usage of fertilizers is reaching to a point, no matter what kind of crop you grow, it is… Uh, the input cost is so high, there is no way a farmer can make money. This is not just in India, this is across the world. In India, of course, all of us know over three hundred thousand farmers have committed suicide in the last twenty years. How many more should die, I'm asking? So I'm asking you a simple question. Always it's explained off, oh, because he had a loan, he committed suicide. Because this happened, he committed suicide. I'm asking all of you, if you were a farmer and your land is rich, you have a loan, you have thousand problems, it doesn't matter. If you can grow food, at least for you and your family, would you commit suicide, I'm asking? You will not, it's very simple. So the soil is so weak and farming is becoming heartbreaking. This is the main reason. I want to tell you this, in United States, in the last twelve years, fifty percent of the farmers have not made a single dollar. The highest suicide rate among all professions in United States is among the farming communities. So this is not just in India, it's across the world. How many countries will be planning, how many leaders will be meeting in this uh, uh I'm traveling through uh, twenty-seven nations, so I will be definitely meeting leaders in these nations. Apart from that, I'm addressing the COP15 of the UNCCD in Ivory Coast, where I'm addressing hundred and seventy leaders who will be there. All the hundred and seventy nations will be represented in the UN, I'm addressing them in the month of May. We are always looking at how we are different, what separates us. We are different nations, different religions, different uh, uh, caste, creed, race, uh, you know, so many things. In so many ways, human beings have been separated. So I want to use soil as a unifying aspect because soil is one thing that all of us connect to. It doesn't matter which religion you are, which nationality you are, what is the color of your skin, you come from the soil, you live upon the soil, when you die, you go back to the soil. So this soil should be a unifying force. Please do not talk about what about this nation, what about that nation, what about this religion, what about… Everybody comes from soil and goes back to soil. So let's use soil as a message of unification because it is. So, can we save soil in a movement? What are all the international institutions that are partnering with? and what has been the response, and what is the first goal in sight, and by when you are envisioning to be accomplished? Uh, the agencies which are working with us, which are partnering with us are UNCCD, that's a UN agency to combat desertification, as desertification is one of the most serious problems in the world right now, and the UNEP, and also the World Food Program, as soil and food are directly connected. And uh, what is the response? The response in every nation has been super positive. Uh, the world leaders, everybody responding, as I said earlier. Uh, what I see is in the last eight months, as I talk to many leaders, environment ministers, agriculture ministers, influencers all over the world, what I see is everybody knows what's the problem, everybody knows this is an urgent… this needs an urgent action. But it looks like everybody was waiting for an idiot who is willing to bell the cat. So here I am. So I am addressing also the COP15, which is in the Ivory Coast in the month of May, where one hundred and seventy 
country representatives are there. I just uh, have been having interactions with the CARICOM, which is the agency of the Caribbean nations. Uh, probably nine to eleven nations are signing uh, an MOU with us. We have written policy documents specific to each country, depending upon its soil type, its latitudinal position, the regions and agricultural traditions of that region. Accordingly, we have written uh, separate policy documents for every nation. So, this will be offered to all of them. Namaskaram. Namaskaram.